Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Sotoka's Mystery, Part 378. Our lesson title today is Message of the Saints. Scripture teaches at the beginning of sorrows, after judgment is pronounced, the gospel of the kingdom will be declared to the whole world. Matthew 24, verse 14. Just bear with me a moment. I'm going to link this passage with another passage. Okay, Matthew 24, verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. Why is this gospel being preached? It's being preached as a pronouncement of the coming establishment of God's kingdom. And it's a statement which the Father wants every single individual on the face of the earth to have heard because it sets in motion the events that will lead to this. Now, what we want to take a look at, Scripture indicates it will be a declaration of the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. Matthew third chapter verse 1 to 2 this is basically what it's going to sound like In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. It's a pronouncement, a declaration. Turn to... Just before you turn. Yes. Some people may be confused mm -hmm. because they believe the establishment of God's kingdom on earth happens just before the millennium. So mm -hmm. when they hear it just after the beginning of sorrows, they need to understand that there's a protracted period for the establishment. In other words, wiping out the Luciferians first. Yes, well it's not saying the kingdom is established. Mm -hmm. It's saying the kingdom is going to be Will established. Be. Yeah. Now this is repeated. Chapter 4, verse 17. <clears throat> you said 3, 1 to 2. Chapter yes. 3, 1 to 2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then chapter 4, okay. verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So <clears throat> when it talks about the gospel is going to be declared, it's talking about the proclamation. We see the repetition of it, of the establishment of the kingdom. It's going to be heard by angels from the heavens to the earth. Everyone on the face of the earth is going to hear this declaration. <clears throat> this sets in motion many things. Next principle. Scripture indicates at that time the faithful and wise servants of the Lord will step forward prepared to feed God's sheep. Matthew 24, verse 45. Gospel is a preparation for the teaching for the first time of the entirety of the gospel. 
Mr. Jones, yes, I got to speak this up. Okay, so now this this lesson that we're having is it's a it's a very straightforward provincial message. It, it is obvious. It's it's talking about the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now there are those of us who we are interested in what's going on, what's happening in the kingdom of heaven. The pro pro pronouncement of the kingdom of heaven is definitely first and foremost, I think, for any being to understand. But, Mr. Jones, where I'm going with this is all the rulers, YHVH included, desire recognition. Pride gets involved. Mm -hmm. Us that are seeking God, his kingdom, and the things that are happening in his kingdom, we're seeking the creator we want to be with him we want to understand him we want to give him the recognition and we want to tell everything that has breath about him him there's no pride involved it's we are seeking to pronounce he who has done it all okay so now the other thing is we ha we have a a like i say I'm, I'm calling a provincial lesson right now. Mm -hmm. We're speaking of the kingdom. There is a kingdom. So now you have the understanding that you are to understand or to desire the kingdom. And so if indeed that's the level that you're at, then that's, I would think, what you would want to do to find out about this kingdom. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm just, it's a, it's a different level just it's for all levels it's, it's for all levels there's, mm -hmm. there's you can't go wrong by what's been said but I'm just I'm paying attention to those of us who are dedicated committed seeking the knowledge and understanding then we want to go deeper well I prayed for the deep the strong meat so that's what we're getting but it also gives the impetus to the beginner who's not even yet a disciple a, an, an understanding that there's a kingdom that's going to supplant every other kingdom that's ever even been mentioned. Exactly. So it's, I don't know, I, I needed to say that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> this is where the teachers come in. <clears throat> the kingdom is proclaimed. The faithful servant is the one who has the understanding about the kingdom. He's going forward now to teach. Matthew 24, verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. But after the gospel is proclaimed, the faithful servants who will have the comprehension, revelation, knowledge, of the kingdom are sent forth to teach all who have been designated to learn of the kingdom about the kingdom. Now, what we find here is there is a coming together of things that the Father has initiated. The gospel is declared those who are the teachers are being sent forth and then there is a final ingredient scripture teaches every one of these will have within him the testimony of Christ the spirit of prophecy Revelation 19 verse 10 And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. So he's talking about a group within a group that have what he calls the testimony of Jesus. What's a testimony? A testimony is a witness, a declaration, a ability to 
discern and re reveal specifics about a particular thing. You testify about something, you are stating something that you know, and you're giving a description of what you're stating. Well, they have the spirit within them that enables them to describe and intensely manifest this concept of Jesus. You talked about God. People wanted to know about God. These are they that have been called and prepared to declare God. <clears throat> he says, I am of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You have to have the spirit of prophecy to be able to declare and describe and explain God. It's called two things. It's called the kingdom of the heavens. It's called the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. God is center. Why is it called the kingdom of the heavens and the kingdom of God? Because it's speaking about the transcendental encompassing of all the heavens. And then it's talking about the central figure of the heavens, mm -hmm. God. So the teachers have all this revelation within them. They've been prepared to do this at this particular time. Now, there's one final ingredient. Scripture indicates at this time, the faithful and wise servants will begin to proclaim the revelation of events to come from the book of Revelation. <clears throat> How do they know this? Because they have a connection which is called the testimony of Christ which connects them to the revelation that's in heaven that belongs to Christ. First Peter, the 10th chapter, verse 11, then we're going to go to Revelation. Excuse me. First Peter, the first chapter. It's no tenth chapter. Hmm. First Peter, the first chapter. Verse 11. Searching what, or what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ, the testimony of Christ, is the spirit of Christ, is the spirit of prophecy, is the spirit that connects them to the book of Revelation. It's talking about the prophets. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ that the church was going to go through and the glory that should follow. It's the spirit of Christ that enables the teacher to declare the gospel of Christ. Explain it so that people can comprehend it. How were they able to do it? Because they have the connection. They have the testimony in them which connects to the book of Revelation in the heavens. That's the stream of Revelation that's consistently coming to them. Now, turn to Revelation 22. Yes. Okay, the Spirit of Christ, Mr. Jones. Yes. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay. Same Spirit that raised Christ, the same Spirit that will raise us, the same Spirit that we get in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. He has many facets, though. Everybody has access to revelation if you're born again. Mm -hmm. But only those that have the testimony of Christ have the fullness of the revelation because they have been designated to be connected to the book right. that has all the fullness of revelation. So yes. having the testimony of Christ is the same as professing the testimony of, Je of Christ? No. Mm -hmm. As to distribute. Everybody professes it. Mm -hmm. It proclaims Christ. Elders, priests, you name it. But the teachers, the faithful servant, the prophet, that four small group, have the ability to access the fullness of revelation 
because the father gave it to the son who gave it to the groom. Right. You are a counterpart who has been given the authority to connect to the buck. We are being prepared for that time. Yes. So to connect with the book and to profess its contents. Yes, yes. Because we know that that is a special certain reserved for only certain individuals mm. to be able to profess the knowledge that's in the book. That's the authority to distribute. Yes, we just read it, Matthew 24. Been authorized from eternity. Mm -hmm. Now, Revelation 22. <clears throat> Verse 18. <clears throat> For I testify unto every man that heareth. I repeat that. I testify unto every man that heareth. The words of the prophecy of this book. How's he going to hear? Because when the X, Y axis crosses, the faithful servant who has a testimony within him speaks what he is led to speak. People are going to hear what he has to say. He's speaking revelation from the book. Saying, the scripture is saying, whoever hears what he has to say, I testify unto any, every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Now this can only be for one time. It is the time in which the plagues are in vogue. The end of the age. If you lived 2,000 years ago, this would not apply to you. It can only apply at the time that the Revelation book is being heard on the earth by the whole world. It can only be the time that's described as the beginning of sorrows, after the judgment. All of this falls into place at this unique time. The true gospel, Jesus said, this gospel we preach in all the world. What you're hearing is not that gospel. What you're hearing is the gospel, but it is a, a narrow version. Mm -hmm. And it's not given for a witness. It's given to save people. It's a different emphasis, totally. The, the puzzle, the pieces are lining up here and now. Everything is being brought together. We're entering into a period now where this place is going to collapse. Yep. The kings are going to collapse. You're going to hear the judgment of the Lord. Things are set in motion. The servants of God are going to be... <coughs> basically sent forth the spirit that's in them that has prepared them connects them to the book and they begin to proclaim the teachings what is the emphasis that they're going to proclaim prophecy mm -hmm. prophecy they're there to prepare people for things to come now <clears throat> what he's saying here is the person that hears this the reason he's hearing it is to prepare himself for the things that are going to come on the, on the world. If he tries to take advantage of what he hears by distorting what he hears, in other words, he may hear something from you and get a year's worth of revelation from you because he chose to sit and hear. And somebody else over here didn't have that opportunity. This guy is in the overall his duty is to go and tell the other guy what he heard mm -hmm. now if he goes and decides that he's going to take advantage of this other person because he hasn't heard and exalt himself through what he hears he is going to set himself up for the plagues that mm -hmm. are going to fall now the Lord talks about this consistently because what the Lord is saying is you're going to have a lot of people that do just that. Turn back to Matthew 24. 
Scripture teaches there will be many false teachers who will try to gain followers for themselves by changing the teachings that they have heard from the faithful servants. Matthew 24, 23 to 26. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Why should they say that? Because they have heard from the faithful teacher the prophecy of things that are going to come. And they choose to take advantage of it and go forth and add to. In other words, they're inserting themselves as an authority yep. in order to gain power, influence, direct control, if you will, over the people that should be, that in, in essence, they should be preparing for these events. Instead, they're trying to control the situation. Yes. Is there any possibility, Mr. Jones, that Christ could magically appear to somebody that, that's not been written about in the book? No. No, of course not. So anybody can't tell you he's here, he's there, because we know it's it's not written in the book. It's, it doesn't happen. There is no incident here that happens the way anybody could speak it out. Oh, he's here. He's there. No, but you're the only one that does know. Remember, this is a Luciferian society. They don't have access to the scripture. They're totally ignorant. They come out of some religion. It's all they've known. It's up to the faithful servant to lead them in the path of truth. You have to forget all this other... What's going forth in the Bible from Genesis to uh, Jude is not going to be discussed. The book of Revelation is the only thing that people are going to get comprehension of. So in that respect, you are the authority. You are the beginning and the ending of everything that person is going to know about God and the kingdom. That's why the teacher here is being prepared. That's why you've been given authority from eternity. Because all this other stuff is going to pass away. Mm -hmm. People are going to be left totally ignorant because they've never been given the understanding. God says, my son, Grace, he's going to, he's going to enlighten these people. So in this respect, in this light, what's going to happen? You're going to have people that distort for their own personal aggrandizement the opportunity. Let's continue to read. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. There shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now this brings to light a principle. How are these people able to do all this? Remember what we said. There are spirits. The mystery of iniquity now operates at its fullness. Mm -hmm. You have what I call imitating spirits mm -hmm. that can do the work of the Holy Spirit. But unless you have the Holy Spirit in you, letting you know that it's not the Holy Spirit, right. you're going to be deceived into believing it's the Holy Spirit. So these guys are going to be filled with spirits, with dunamis, and they're going to hear the word, they're going to hear the gospel, they're going to use the opportunity for their own benefit. Mm. We're being warned. Mm. Yes. Those spirits can operate in this temporary arrangement because it's malleable. Now you step into a, in a, a permanent or an eternal reality, they can't change that, they can't replicate that. No, of course not, but they're not intending to. They intend to dominate here because it's a fallen region, it's a darkness region, they're darkness spirits. But that's what the point I'm bringing out is that they can mimic the truth or the very a variation of it because of this temporary arrangement that, mm -hmm. that most Christians don't know about. Yeah, well, God has engineered it that way for a purpose, for a reason. And that is to qualify for the fullness of what God has for you, you're going to be tested. That's why the scripture tells us, test the spirits. Mm -hmm. 
majority of the body of Christ is already in deception. Yes. And you don't even have to have people performing miracles because they have not been steadfast in protecting themselves right. and committing themselves. Right. They've just been drifting along and somebody comes along and gives them the lie and they swallow it wholesale. But let's go on. He says, verse 25, Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. So he's saying here, there are going to be people that hear what you have to say, and they're going to take advantage of it to amass followers for themselves. They're going to add to what the revelation initially proclaimed. They're going to assert themselves in it and make themselves a centerpiece, just like the people do today. And Jesus is warning this is going to happen to the people who are going to hear the revelation for the first time. Just as these lessons we're teaching here, if this gets broad enough audience, you're going to hear other people pick it up and add to it for their to. own aggrandation. You know, that's what they did with Paul. Yeah. But let's go on. So the Lord talks about this. Why? Because he's preparing the teacher to understand. Remember what the prophets did. They searched the scriptures mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Then they got the revelation that they proclaimed. And having searched the scripture, the revelation always has to line up with the scripture. If you get revelation that don't line up with the scripture, it didn't come from the book revelation. of Revelation sure. of the Holy Spirit. Sure. The Lord goes on. And he says, verse 27, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, what is he saying here? Notice what he's been talking about. False teachers, false prophets, individuals that have added to the word, to the revelation. Mm -hmm. He's saying, <clears throat> don't believe what these people are saying. Once you hear the word... Pursue what you have heard originally. Search. Validate. He says, people are going to rise that if we're possible, will deceive the very elect. Why is it not possible to deceive the very elect? The very elect have the Holy Spirit in its fullness. What is he saying? He's saying to pursue the Holy Spirit. He's not talking to teachers. He's talking to the people that you're going to teach. Because those people that you're going to teach are going to be wide open to deception if they are not alert. Can you break down verse 28 for us? Yeah, I'm just getting ready to do that. Okay. He's preparing people for the true coming. He says, when I, when, when I come, everybody is going to know. Just like lightning running across the sky lights up the whole sky and everybody can see... <clears throat> he says, it's going to be the same thing when I come. Therefore, we go into verse 28. Wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Now, the word eagles there is vultures. Mm -hmm. It's not eagles. <clears throat> what is he saying? He's saying, by the time I come, all things are going to be fulfilled. In other words... Revelation 22, verse 18, the plagues will have fallen on the world and the world will be prepared for me to come and set up the kingdom by that time. Yes. The carcass. Explain that. I'm going to. I'm giving you the background so you understand the time. He's saying when I come, everybody's going to see me. When I come... It will be the after the fulfillment of all the prophecies. When I come, everybody that has distorted, everybody that has misrepresented what the faithful witnesses, the faithful teachers have done, is going to be a dead body being fed off right. by vultures. Right. Remember what the scripture said in Revelation. 
they will add the plague to that individual who misconstrues the word of God. So he's saying, when I come, the world is going to be, every area of the earth is going to be littered with bodies, false teachers, false prophets, individuals that misrepresented the gospel. And this is leading to the, the next portion of our lesson, which we will go into Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Scripture indicates the teachings of the faithful servants lay the groundwork for those who make the rapture and all the martyr groups who come up later on. In other words, we're going to go into what they actually teach. Everybody's going to hear, but not everybody's going to make the rapture. But what they hear will enable later on the ones that get left behind to become faithful martyrs.